Let's grow some bacteria. Delicious yeast soup. Mm. So this is bacterial growth media. I'm going to be sterilizing these tubes with this flame and then adding in this bacterial growth media. Next, I'm going to add a little bit of the antibiotic canamycin because I only want the bacteria that are resistant to canamycin to grow. Mix it all up. Frozen bacteria. Frozen bacteria. So after this inoculating loop has been sterilized, die bacteria, die. Then I take a little bit of the bacteria that are frozen in this tube. Hello. And I'm gonna put the bacteria in one of these tubes, uh, but I'm not going to put them in the other one. This will show that the liquid itself isn't contaminated with bacteria. Whee! So this is gonna shake overnight. It shakes so that the bacteria constantly mix with the air because they actually need that, like those bubbles and stuff. They need all that air to breathe and grow. You know, something close to breathing, it's fine. Come back the next day and we'll see what happens. All right, all right, let's see what we got. Yeah, there we go. See how the one on the left that we put bacteria in is now full of bacteria. And the other one isn't. <clears throat> My throat is also full of bacteria. All right, next we're gonna get some of these tubes out and we're gonna put the bacteria in those tubes. All right, we're gonna put these in the centrifuge that spins them really fast. And this thing is gonna spin them around super fast, so we're gonna, we're gonna come back in five minutes. This is spinning them at 4,000 times the force of gravity, relative centrifugal force. Please, do it, do it. Four, 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 thank you, thank you. Start. Yeah, let's go. All right, be back in five minutes. It's done, let's go. All right, you see how the bacteria are all down in a clump at the bottom there. We're gonna dump everything else out because we don't need it anymore. Ah, get out of here. Get out, get out. We're gonna remove the last little bits of the liquid there so we just have that nice bacterial pellet at the bottom. And then we are gonna mix them up with some infiltration buffer. So this is a buffer that will help the bacteria infect plants. All right, we're gonna add it to this tube and then add more of that infiltration buffer. Definitely just spilled that everywhere. It's plant time. All right, I'm gonna suck up some of this, suck up some of that bacteria. All right, I'm gonna make a tiny little prick on the back of the leaf with a paper clip. And then inject it in. <clears throat> Whee! All right, now all the leaves have been injected, so these just need to go grow for a couple of days. All right, come back and get these in a couple of days. So these experiments are all part of a project to make a norovirus vaccine. I'm actually trying all sorts of different vaccine candidates, and this is just one of them. This particular vaccine involves making the protein that allows norovirus to attach to our cells which is similar in some ways to the uh, COVID spike protein that we all probably know about at this point. However, this vaccine has one key difference. I've gone in and removed parts of the protein that vary the most between different strains of norovirus. 
So the result is that hopefully it will create a vaccine that can simultaneously target many more strains of the virus, because there are hundreds of norovirus strains. Similar techniques like this could be used for other viruses as well, that have lots of different strains. For instance, influenza and HPV would both be great candidates for doing something like this. I hope that one day we'll have fewer vaccines, but they'll protect us against many more different diseases. The more you know, the more you know, the more you know, the more you know.